Hi there and welcome back to part 6 um, of making this spider. Uh, we're going to continue with the uh, the creation of this spider by adding in the bones so that we can start animating <coughs> animating this object. So um, what I've done is I've just moved it above the ground. So I just went to pressed <coughs> 1 for the front view. I'll just put my screencast keys on. So I pressed, uh, I'm in the layout, the, sorry, the modeling tab. Um, you could be in the layout tab, it doesn't really matter, but I'm in object mode. I move the, and I moved the whole thing up. So I just uh, left click to select it and then use the grab tool and just moved it above. Um, you'll notice that the origin is now absolutely on the ground. And the reason, the way I did that is um, I just wanted to make that the absolute center for this, uh, even though the model's above. And the way you do this is you need to apply the rotation and scale. So uh, you can press Control A is the shortcut for that, um, which is apply and then choose all transforms. And that just applies the rotation and scale. So if it happened to be offset, then the, the rotation and position all become uh, you see on the right hand side here the the location is zero, uh, rotation is zero, and the scale is one. So it's all zeroed out effectively. So um, now that that's done, we can get on with making the bones. Um, you do need to do that because sometimes you get weird behavior when uh, the scale is different, uh, or if it's a non-uniform scale, the bones will behave weirdly. So make sure that you have done that. It's Control A, and then all transforms for your object, and just make sure that your spider's feet are on the ground. I've put mine on the ground, um, just like that. So. Uh, yeah, we have a few options in Blender 2.8 for adding uh, the rig. Um, so I've just clicked off of the object and I'm just going to click add and you'll see that if you go to armature there's a few options. Um, now the requested tutorial was a spider so we, we unfortunately have got a bunch of things like birds and cats and horses and sharks and wolves um, and a basic human or a basic dog uh, but we don't have a spider so uh, we're gonna have to make this by scratch which is not a bad thing so if we click first of all on single bone and um, you'll notice that it puts the bone um, just at the the origin there uh, and then we're gonna uh, create bones from that one bone now uh, you can't really see it it cuts straight into this and we can't see it but you can change that option in the right hand side over here where you see the uh, green little guy um, he this is the armature tab if you click on the viewport display just to the next of it we can say in front and what that'll do is it will just put the bones so that they kind of uh, are rendered in front of the the object now um, we could rotate this around um, and then get it into position. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to turn this one into basically a handle. So I'm going to go into edit mode. You can change it from up here, um, from object mode into edit mode. And then I'm just going to click on this, the, the bottom one. So this is the, so like the, the first part of the bone. And I'm just going to grab it uh, in the Z axis and push it all the way up so it sticks out of the top of the spider. Now this is going to be the the root bone um you can see the names of the bones if you just go down to the bone tab on the right hand side here this one's just called bone um if you if you want uh you can rename these uh i'm not going to bother too much about that because we kind of could be there forever um uh, make a really long video but we just want to um get this sort of into position so again you can use the move tool here um or you can just press g and then the letter that you need the for the axis the x the y or the z so i'm going to put this around about the middle um looks about the center and then we're going to start pulling the bones out and position them into place <coughs> so um, the way you uh, do this, so we're in edit mode, the way you do this is you can tap E to extrude just like you would do a face. So I'm going to go into top view um, so that we can do this. Uh, I've got the bottom um, ball selected and I'm just going to tap E and take it out to here. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, we can adjust this once we get there. So I've, I've clicked to do this um, and because once again uh, this is common that we have symmetry uh, we want to be able to do that. So on the left hand side where we see extrude, the, the little toolbar, there's a forked option. If you tick that, um, it should make the fork uh, for the x-axis symmetry. Now it hasn't done it, so let me just check again. Um, if I go to uh, tool, x-axis mirror, okay, um, maybe just delete that and try again. So delete that, delete that bone and try again. So we've got the option of forked 
should be set if I tap E. Okay, forked. There we go. For some reason, it didn't work the first time. It worked this time. So um, yeah, you might need to do that as well. So uh, the fork should make that you um, fork the, the the bone that you're going to do is forked. And because we've got this under tools, we've got x-axis mirror. As I keep going, you'll see if I tap E, it should mirror, so I don't have to do anything. And all I'm going to do is just approximately get this to where I need it from this view. And obviously, it's not going to be perfect because we'll need to move them up and down. So if I orbit around a little bit, you'll see that we can. We're not quite where we need to be, so when I click on this one, just drag it up so it looks like it's about the center. If you want to, you can press the dot key on your number pad, and that will zoom in center to the selected object. Again, this one, dot key, just scroll out a little bit. This one doesn't look like it's in the right place, so I'm just going to use the blue box here, which moves it along that X and Z, sorry, X and Y axis, and leaves Z alone. And then I need to pull down this way as well, so. Um, I'll just move that over a touch and tap E again and just pull this down and just have a little look. Uh, so use the blue one to move it out. Oops. Like that. Hit the dot key again, just orbit around. So it definitely needs to be up and it definitely needs to be over. So uh, you can see it's a bit fiddly. Um, I'm feeling like I'm getting close though and yeah that's not too bad and then the last one tap E and just go down to the ground so again zoom in just a touch move it over a little bit so I know it's high enough I just don't think it's in the right kind of the right position so maybe there yep that's not too bad so uh, do the best that you can. Um, basically, I'm going to pause the video and we're going to do exactly the same again. So because we've matched up one side, we're able to match up the other one. So uh, again, you just click and you tap E and because we should have forked on, it should fork that one and then fork will switch off for all the other ones. So uh, as I said, I'm just going to do this in high speed and when we're done, we'll come back and parent this up and put some IK in.
All right, so you may have noticed that I um, did uh, the fangs as well, because I probably want to make those move. Um, the last thing we're going to do is just one little thing. Uh, we want these bones to deform the mesh, uh, but we don't want this root bone um, to deform the mesh at all. So if you go down to the bones um, uh, tab here, you'll see that there's a deform tick box and we want this to not deform. All the other bones by default will choose, uh, will be default deform. And I could go around and name them all, but I'm just gonna leave them as they are. And we're gonna get straight into this because it's already a long tutorial. So um, the the next important thing is making sure that it's saved. Uh, what I usually do is I've saved this uh, Spider-05. I'm just gonna click file and I create save as. In case this all goes wrong, I'm just going to hit the plus over here, and that's, that puts, adds a number onto the end of this, so now it's Spider 06, and I'm going to save that. So um, the reason for that is that if it all goes to custard, uh, we can always come back and change the bones a little bit and make them, make them work a bit better. So the way that you get this parented up is we need to go into object mode, uh, we need to select the skin, so the spider, and then hold shift and select the bones. Um, what that does is it makes this a bright orange and that one's a red. Um, it needs to be done in that order, so skin, then shift and click for the bones, and then you use control P to parent up with automatic weights. Um, this most of the time will work fine. If you click with automatic weights, um, it should have set the parent and set up the armature um, so that it deforms this mesh. Now to test it, we just jump into pose mode. So I'm gonna select the bones, Go from object mode into pose mode and then I should be able to pick one of these bones and tap R and it should deform the mesh. So I'm just going to quickly check uh, that this mostly works, which it should do because these bones are fairly well separated. Um, and then we should be okay to start adding a little bit of IK. Um, to this so that we can uh, animate it a little bit easier. So uh, it looks like it's worked okay. I've just saved it with Control S and then I'm just going to show you how to add IK. Uh, I'm just going to do this for, I don't know, for this uh, front one. So we're in pose mode right here and IK, what IK stands for is um, inverse kinematics. It allows me to be able to move this bone and all these other bones along the chain will react accordingly. Um, now assuming that the bone roll is okay it should work all right now uh, this might be a little bit trial and error depending on how you've made this but if you go down to uh, the bone constraints tab so it's the second from the bottom i'm in pose mode and it says uh, context tab is bone constraints it's like a i know like a chain around a bone and we click on add bone constraints and choose inverse kinematics um, what that does is by default the chain length is all the way to the very very start but we can change the chain length in the drop down here so we want it to go uh, one two three bones so if I click uh, like this you'll see that the line goes oh maybe make it f make it four so it's got one two three four bones it goes to the start of this one um, and what that allows us to do is uh, if I select that bone and press G you'll see that um, when I move this bone, the other ones kind of move along. Um, so it looks a bit more realistic. And it kind of works okay for spider legs. Um, if you had some issues with it rolling a bit funny, you can change the bone roll. Um, to change the bone roll, uh, if you go into uh, edit mode again, you can click here, one of the tools is the actual roll, and you can zero the roll out as well so that it kind of looks okay. Uh, most of the time, it should be fine. So um, I'm just going to finish this off. Uh, I'll do one more and then uh, stop the video and let you get, let you finish off. Um, but basically, you click on the bone, inside of pose mode, go to bone constraints, add a constraint, inverse kinematics, and choose uh, the chain length as four. Uh, and then test it by grabbing the bone and just moving it around and you should see that it will move the other bones in order. So that's uh, more or less it. We have um, a, a rigged um, character, a rigged spider, and once all these four IKs are, sorry, all eight IKs are done, because we'll need to do the other side too, um, we're going to do some animation. So uh, carry on, do exactly what we did and finish off all of the IK for all of the legs. And I'll see you in the next video where we're going to do some spider walking and idle animations.